it's no secret, landings are tough. We're gonna work through it, whether you've soloed or not. We're gonna work you through some of the secret to perfect landings. Hey everyone, Jason Shappert here of m0a.com and you are listening to the Private Pilot Podcast brought to you by our number one rated online ground school. I keep saying groundschoolacademy.com, that'll work. But as we move everything over to m0a.com, the new launch day of the new courses, if you're watching this and the video is a few months old, it's already happened in December of 2020. So very excited to be sharing that with you all. Hope you can check that out. It's not just pass your written test, pass your knowledge test. It's not just pass your check ride. We are in the business of making you a safer, smarter pilot and building family as we do it. So blessed, thankful, excited to be with you all uh, here. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this. I wanna share briefly with you all on how we can work, how we can improve our landings a little bit. And perhaps you've been through the secret to perfect landings, right? You know my tips and tricks. Perfect landing starts with a perfect pattern. Airspeed is king. Ditch the word flare from your vocabulary. So I'm going off the basis that this, this isn't your first Jason Shepard landing sermon that you've heard before. And if it is, I need you to go back and just go find the, go on the M0A YouTube page and just search the secret to perfect landings. And there's just a great, there's many series out there, many webinars out there for you to see and check all of that out. I wanna spend some time going a little bit deeper on this. And I, I wanna start with a fun story. You know, I was, uh, how I built my flight instruction career early on is I built it as the, the instructor that would take the students that nobody wanted in a weird way. I know that sounds a little bit, a little bit crazy, but it was hard for me to find students. I was, I was 18 years old. Most people looked at this 18 year old kid. I looked super, super young back then. Now I'm like, really, I'm getting old now, but um, back then, 18 years old, I looked super, super young. And people would look at me going, there's no way you're an instructor, let alone even a pilot. So it was very difficult to get students early on. So I just built this reputation. I took on one student that had like 60 hours and hadn't soloed yet. And they said, Jason, I don't know what to do with them. It's, I don't think they're meant to be a pilot. Like literally, I just don't think they'll ever truly learn. If you wanna try, go for it. It was a passionate student. They, they were discouraged and beaten down a little bit, but they had the passion in them. So I said, absolutely. I think within, on our third flight together, we, uh, we soloed this gentleman and the other instructor was just blown away. And that kind of started this, this reputation around the airport of, hey, Jason can help like, like landing doctor kind of stuff, like help some of our students out that are struggling. So I began to just take on these students that were, you know, 40, 50, 60 hours and hadn't soloed yet and was soloing them in two or three hours thereafter. And it was making these tiny shifts that I'm gonna to explain to you here today to help them make that adjustment. And really there were two major things. First, and I haven't really shared this a whole lot publicly. So again, I'm hoping you have a strong foundation on some of my beliefs on landings. Like you gotta get the airspeed down, you gotta nail the patterns, you gotta ditch the word flare from your vocabulary, we transition instead. So I'm hoping you have a foundation of where I'm coming from when I teach landings. Some of the things we did and some of the things I realize is that students would do well at landings when I help them with the radio calls. And I just realized, wow, obviously this isn't ideal because you have to, to solo, I need you to work the radios. Heck, to be a, a great pilot, you gotta be able to multitask. But I noticed early on, a lot of these students, I just had this crazy idea of, listen, I'll work the radios, I'll handle that, just show me what you're capable of. And when their sole task was to just focus on the landing, the landings were pretty good. Like the fundamentals were all there. But when they had to talk on the radios and interact with ATC or just at a pilot controlled airport and think about other traffic and, and everything else, the multitasking wasn't there. And the multitasking normally isn't there in a very young pilot. Or gosh, I don't mean young age wise, I mean young in the logbook, hours wise. So what I began to do is I, I actually went and got sidewalk chalk and I drew a runway on the ramp in front of our hangar. And I encouraged them to go, and encourage you to go draw this in your driveway. 
and I drew a big, you know, runway, let's just say 3618. And we stood at the end of 36. And we, I'm talking a big runway, like your driveway. Hopefully, if you have a big driveway or a big parking lot, you can do this in. Spray paint in your backyard, whatever it takes. And we made this, the markings pretty realistic and everything else. And we stood at the end of 36. And as, as realistic as possible, they were on my left side. I was on the right side. We were standing shoulder to shoulder. And I said, talk me through the flight. And they would go through, you know, at the, this time we were pilot controller at Ocala, Ocala traffic, Skyhawk, you know, two, three, Mike Zulu departing runway three, six, Ocala. And they would say, okay, my heels are starting to touch the floor. My toes go to the bottom of the pedals. We smoothly apply some full power. And as he's saying that, or she's saying that, we begin slowly walking forward. This sounds like really weird. I, I, and it is a little bit, but just keep listening. And we kind of start slowly walking forward. And I asked, where, where, what are you doing next? Well, my right foot is getting a little bit stronger because I'm feeling some P factor, some torque factor, some left turning tendencies. My eyes quickly glance inside. I confirm engine gauge is green, airspeed's alive. And I call that out verbally. I say, okay, call it out. And they go, airspeed alive, engine gauge is all green my side. We're accelerating speed. I begin to feel the controls getting light. And, and you see, this is like the ultimate chair flying. And we walked all the way around the traffic pattern. They made all the radio calls, like they were at a pilot controlled airport or if it was a towered airport, I pretended to be tower and they made the radio calls that way. And we would do this for an hour around the pattern. Hey, our downwind's getting extended now because there's another plane, let's, let's rework our pattern now. And we would work all these different possible scenarios on the ground. See, airplanes are expensive when the propeller starts spinning. It's cheap to buy ground time from an instructor, relatively speaking, there's nothing cheap in aviation, but it's cheaper than when that propeller's spinning and you're paying the instructor. And we walked around that traffic pattern, like I said, for about an hour. And from there, then, if they still had the mental energy, we'd go just go do three, four landings, a very, very short lesson, like a 0.6 or a 0.7 on the hops. Three, four landings. And I made sure, and this is more a note for my CFIs and future CFIs, but yourself included too, I always ended on a good note. You never ever end a lesson on a bad landing because you will think about that bad landing for a very long time. I always ended on a strong, very positive note. Don't end me on a, on a poor landing. Even just a decent landing is fine, but not a bad one. And we'd end always with that little bit of encouragement and we'd come back and we'd talk about some landings. Sometimes we'd come back to our chalk drawing. We'd walk some of the scenarios that we didn't cover or some of the areas where we were a little bit high. And I'd show where we actually were a little bit high in the pattern. And I would make all those adjustments. And you would be amazed at the leaps and bounds because we try to teach landings as a trial by fire. We throw students in the airplane and we just ask them to, here, let me show you a landing. Now you go do it. And we never do a ground lesson about landings, team. What happened to gr ground lessons for landings? Think about that. That usually helped a lot of these students click. One of the next things uh, I, I've done, and this one you perhaps have heard before, and I, I apologize, this is supposed to be the private po podcast. It's turning like, there, there's some CFIs I'm thinking of that should be watching this right now. So. Private pilots, send this to your CFIs maybe. Now the CFIs are smiling because they're going, oh, this is why my students sent it to me. Next is slow flight down the runway. I, I do this with every single student. I do this on flight reviews. I mean, it's just, I want you to practice slow flight down the runway. I want you to treat it like it's going to be a normal landing, coming on in like it would be a normal landing. Right when you get to that transition phase, give it a little power, then a little more. Then a little more, I want you to hold those tires just inches off the ground. And you're gonna constantly be just babying in millimeters, maybe even centimeters of power at a time. So you kind of find that sweet spot and you're just riding ground effect. You can see down the runway the entire time. There's no issues with that. You're practicing and seeing what that sight picture looks like. I want you to feel what the controls feel like, how ineffective the controls really are. By the controls, I mean the ailerons. The rudders are pretty darn effective, but the ailerons are doing hardly anything for you. The elevator's not doing a whole lot for you. You need to feel those inputs because so often we try to fix things with the yoke when the yoke is just not being as effective as it could be or as 
it should be. Slow flight down the runway. So team, two things I need you to really, really focus on. Go make a runway in your yard or in your driveway, and it's chair flying, it's walking flying, really, and practice it. You struggle with your radio calls, practice that. I found time and time again, it was a workload issue, not a landing issue. It was adding all those skills back at the same time. CFIs, you have to slow, you have to take things from your students and slowly start to give things to your students. Now you take the radio calls, now you take this and slowly give these things. You cannot throw them just into the fire. I'm preaching to CFIs on the private pilot podcast. I apologize. Private pilots, you all are outstanding. Thank you for being such a blessing to this amazing M0A family. I hope you're in the M0A Nation Facebook group. So many great events, great live streams are happening in there. I hope uh, we've helped you just the tiniest bit, maybe with landings, maybe with a maneuver, maybe with a knowledge test, maybe with a check ride. Let me know in the comments below this video if you're watching this as a video on YouTube or Facebook. If you're just listening to this as a podcast on iTunes, thank you for making this one the most listened to aviation podcast on iTunes. Be sure to throw it five stars and then just send us an email just to say thank you. It means the world is our oxygen. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you.